Hi, I'm Jay John. Welcome to Facing the Canon. I'm delighted to welcome my friends, Nikki and Pippa Gumbel, pioneers of Alpha. Nikki and Pippa, thank you so much for joining me on Facing the Canon. Wow, it's a huge privilege. It's an honour to be with you. It is indeed. The famous J. John. <laughs> Listen, I, we have known each other for several decades. Yep. Yes. Yes. And I, I was at that meeting where you got touched, Nikki, but we'll talk about that um, <laughs> l later on. Pippa, let me start with you. Now, your father was a colonel. Ooh, oh, good, good knowledge. knowledge, good research. Yes. And you were born in Germany. Oh my goodness, oh. John, I, that's scary. You know too much about me already. <laughs> so how long did you live in Germany for? I think we did three different postings. My father was in the army, military, so I was born there and we moved around there and at other places as well around the world, including Japan. The military um, attaché, wasn't it? Yes, oh. so, yes, so I was, I was a, an army kid. And then ended up back in London? Ended up back in, actually, down in the south coast, yes. uh, south of England, in Ke Kent and Sussex border, and I loved ponies, and that, you know, that was sort of my life there. Yes. And with you, Nikki, your father was from Germany as well. My father was a refugee. Yes. He was a refugee from the Nazis. Um, I didn't really know anything about my father until very recently, because when I was 14, my mother took my sister and I for a walk in Brighton. We, my sister and I can remember it so clearly. And she said, your father is German and Jewish, and you're never to speak to him about it. And we never did. You never did. No. So he came to London. He, he came. And he was, was disbarred in Germany for yes. being Israelite. Yes. Um, and uh, he was, yes, he was a, a barrister. And his father was head of a law firm. He was a barrister and he was disbarred. And so he came over here and qualified as a barrister over here. And then met your mother. My who mother was, was also on the opposite, a yeah, barrister. Yeah, they were on the opposite side of the case. My mother was a pupil and he was doing the case on the opposite side. They had lunch together. Mm. So. Pippa, what about you growing up? Did you have any faith? Well, not really. I mean, it wasn't that I had no faith. I don't think I ever asked that question. I went to, for a time, I went to a conference school, so we had chapel, and I must have heard some of the stories about Jesus. But I don't think anything went in. And we weren't a family particularly who talked about God or faith or prayed or any of those things. So I had no concept, really, what being a Christian was. And it was only when I actually, well, I came to, I'd sort of met Nikki, I'd come to London, that I bumped into some people who call themselves Christians. And I could see that what they had was something totally different. From but, but the first time that you met Nikki, you met him because you wanted to get into a nightclub. You know far <laughs> too much about me, John. This is very worrying. I can't sweep yes. that under the carpet. <laughs> no. So you knew someone who was able to do that. Absolutely. And um, it was a very cheeky thing to do. I had a friend. We wanted to go to this club called Francoise, which was the top of the King's Road in London. And um, she said, ring up Nikki Gumbel. And I did. Um, and he said, oh, come round. I've got a party here. Come and join in. And that's how we began our, fr our sort of friendship. Friendship. And then. that was the first time. Yeah. Now, you went to Cambridge, Nikki, and uh, there some of your friends became Christians. Yeah. Was that Nikki and Scylla? Yes. And that disturbed you? Yes. And what did that lead to? So, uh, yes, I had been an atheist. Uh, my father was an agnostic. I became an atheist argumentative atheist. I'd spent the first few months at Cambridge um, sort of um, involved in these conversations where I sort of took on the atheist. Well, I felt it strongly. I believed it powerfully. Um, and then Nikki and Scylla told me that they had become Christians. I was very worried about them because they were lovely people. I thought, what's got, what's that? I must help you. So I must do some research. And the only thing I could find that night was an old Bible I'd had for RE. And I started reading that night. And I read all the way through Matthew's Gospel, all the way through Mark, Luke. I got about halfway through John's Gospel. Three o'clock in the morning, I fell asleep. Next morning, kept reading. I was a student. I didn't have anything else to do. I just kept reading the, the New Testament. 
And it was as if the person that I was reading about emerged from the pages of the New Testament. And I encountered him. And that's, what, that's the only way I can describe it. It was an encounter with the risen Jesus. And through reading, through reading the, the Gospels. Testament, through reading the Gospels, yeah. Yes. Particularly John's Gospel. Um, and, uh, and I knew I had to make a decision because the last thing I wanted to do was to become a Christian because I, well, first of all, I had had my intellectual objections, which I didn't feel had been answered. Um, secondly, I had a reputation as being, I, I didn't want to look like I'd changed my mind. I'd done a U-turn, as they say these <laughs> days. Complete U-turn. Uh, um, um, so uh, I didn't want to do that. And then I thought it would be boring too. I thought it would be, you know, I'd have to give up everything that was fun in life and that life would be, so I thought the best thing would be to delay, delay to my deathbed, and then I could sort of repent on my deathbed, still have fun in this life, and then I thought there's no integrity in that. You can't, you can't do that. So very reluctantly, you know, I think C.S. Lewis said he was the most reluctant yes. convert in all England. I think at my time, I was the most reluctant convert in all England. So I, I basically said, okay. And at that moment, I experienced I can remember it so well, the experience of the, um, just the, the, what I'd unconsciously been looking for all my life. And the next time uh, Nicky met you, Pippa, he said yeah. something like, you look awful, you need Jesus. He did. <laughs> we, were, we were at a party. I was yes. still sort of doing the party scene a little bit. And Nicky had become a Christian. And in the, those days, um, he had tracks, lit literally, he I would, would have, have had, had all your books, JJ. Oh. All your books if in you every had been pocket. writing, I would have had no. every, stuck in his pocket. I would no. have had the whole lot, the complete works of JJ on in no, my pockets. No, but Nikki and I were the, were very similar. We we both had David Watson booklets, yes. Yes. John Stock yeah. booklets, yes. Michael Green yeah. booklets, and we exactly. just gave them out. And New Testament and all the rest of that. Yes, we did. And I had them all in my pockets. At this party, at this 21st, which was, a, a, well, perhaps it was an 18th, maybe. Yeah, and anyway, yeah it was Nikki, an 18th, it would have been. But, yeah, but there's, there's, there was this place in London called The Kitchen. Yes. That you, tell us about The Kitchen. Yes. Well, I thought Nicky had gone mad. Um, he was telling me that I looked awful and I needed Jesus. I just thought he'd gone so sort of religious and crazy that I didn't really want much more to do with him. And I sort of went on with my normal, normal life. But wonderfully, somebody told me to go and drop into this place called The Kitchen. I didn't know it was run by Christians, but I started going along there and they were the nicest people. And I, could, I was so intrigued. They were nice, they were normal, they were grounded. And, and the amazing thing was, you didn't have to pay for the meals. No. 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 So that so was a new it concept. Was, it was wonderful. Um, yes. yes you could, uh, the idea for them was that they'd put on this food, they would have a donation. Yes. Food, but it was an opportunity for them, though they were serving the food, to sure. sit with people and actually talk. talk. I wonder about whether their that faith. was the first prototype of Alpha. Yeah. But anyway, that's yeah, another it was question. A, definitely <laughs> around food. And I think it was, and it was actually during that time, one of them though I think a lot of them just by their lives had drawn me in. One of them sat me down, opened the Bible, and read to me um, that verse, John 10, verse 10. Yes. I've come that you might have life and life to all its fullness. And it was as if a light bulb went on at that moment for me. I suddenly thought, yes, no, that's the life I want. I have a life and <coughs> it's okay, although I'm quite lost. If I, was, if I was honest, I was lost. I was being blown around by the party, the people, not knowing if I had a purpose or anything in my life. But when I met these people and when they started explaining the Bible to me, it's something changed. And I, I went back after the, they'd read that verse to me to the place where I was staying, knelt down by the bed, and I was sharing with four other um, young girls there, and prayed my first real prayer. prayer. And it felt for the first time that I was connecting with a God in heaven. And that moment I gave my life to Christ. So both of you kind of independently in different situations, both reached out to Jesus mm. and opened the door and let him in. Yeah. 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 So and then when did the two of you get married? Well, we, I mean, that was I, I went to the kitchen where she uh, uh, she had been. And I saw when I opened the book there, they had a, a guest book, a visitor's book. The first name was Philippa Hislop which is Pips's name. Yes. Um, and, um, and because I knew her from our sort of nightclub days, 
um, and also from, and we were friends. We were yes. very good friends. Mm. But there was no, neither. I would. Uh, Pips had so many boyfriends. I was always nonsense. giving her giving nonsense. her advice about her boyfriends. <laughs> I was the sort Terrible of safe. Choice. I was the safe person that she could talk to because there was no yes. question of any romance. Yeah. And then um, it was the right at the end, three years later, at the end of uh, time at university. Yes. Um, we went to a party and. Pips held my hand, and I thought, that's it, we're getting married. That's it. Um, that was but it. It didn't mean anything to her. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, I, I fell in love. And I fell in love, and she got on the train to go back to Belgium, where she was, and the train went off, and I was, ah, I can't live without her. Yes. And, um, and um, nice. then, and she still had loads of other boyfriends. No, I, I, didn't. I They turn up with flowers. She and take had her to, lots to, of friends. To, to, um, <laughs> and I was, I was, le I was left cleaning the cupboards in the flats. And the, so uh, to <laughs> how long have you been married now? 44 years, is it? 44, Four heading towards years. the gold. Yes. Okay. 44 and a half yes. years. And how many children and grandchildren do you have? We have three children and we've got nine grandchildren, but a tenth on the way. A tenth on the way. Yeah, practically a sort of football. So, yeah. faith was uh, solidified. You became a barrister, Nikki. Yep. But then you got felt called to ordination. How did that happen? I think I mean I loved being a barrister. Being a barrister is like well, in, in, you know, in our family, everybody's barristers. So yes. mo sister, mother, father, um, grandparents, uncles, everyone, cats, everybody's barrister. So, so, um, uh, but I, although I loved it, when I thought about the long term, what do I want to do? Uh, Sandy Miller, who was the vicar at the time, said, take a long view. Uh, and Because basically, if your ladders are leaning against the wrong wall, that's not a great ladder to climb. Absolutely. Because if you don't want to get to the top. So what? So I looked at what I would, if I stayed as a barrister, and I got to the top, which I probably wouldn't have done, but you know, there's no point in climbing it if even when you get there, you don't yes. want to get there. What do you do? You become a QC, you become a judge, you become a court of appeal, House of Lords. Uh, no, I didn't want to do that. There was nothing in me that wanted to do that. And then I thought, if I never thought I'd be doing what, what I'm doing now, but I thought if I was to be able to tell people about Jesus full yes. time, be able to do what I love doing, because that's what I was doing in my spare time when I was a barrister. Um, and, I, I would, and also, when I defended people, or prosecuted, I prosecuted and defended, you know, you'd prosecute someone, and if they were, even if they were, you you won your case and they were convicted, you think, okay, they're going to prison. Is that the answer? Um, or you, or you, you, they get off when you were defending them, and you think, yeah, but they're just going to go back, and you know, it, it just felt I wanted to tell them there's a different way, and that one of the huge privileges now we have is to go into prisons and yes. with Alpha and tell people. Yes and see people's lives radically changed. Mm -hmm. So that was I, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to have the opportunity to spend, rather than just you know, every evening and weekend, I wanted to do it full time. Full and, time. Um, and I thought I'd be running a small church somewhere, yeah. you know, whatever, or being vicar. Of, I never dreamt that I'd be doing what I'm y well, doing right now. But, absolutely. But um, even to get a ta taste of what I'm doing now was sure. what I was hoping for. So how did you feel, Pippa? You thought you were going to be a wife to a barrister <laughs> and now he wants to be a vicar. Well, I think from the moment, really, we both were, um, became Christians, we wanted to be involved with ministry. Yes. And actually, we spent a lot of our time having groups, going to prayer meetings, just being involved with the church. And actually, your, Nicky's job then was so demanding that quite often we'd have a home group and Nicky would come back with his work for the night and say, oh, you started, I'm going to have to go and you know, work on my brief and this sort of thing until till sort of later. So it was a bit of a conflict what we wanted to do with the amount of work that, that Nicky was having to do. So I, th I think there was always a feeling I, we could go in a different direction, and actually, I was I was delighted because I can't. I, in one way, I couldn't share in his life as much no. with um, the cases. Some of the cases were very interesting. Some of them sure. were perhaps a little less interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but whereas the ministry together has been the most wonderful journey. Absolutely, and I th I think uh, 
what you just said is so true, that the two of you have ministered together and you've been partners both in, in marriage, in life, in ministry. And it's been wonderful to see how the Lord led you from that call to ordination to Holy Trinity Brompton. So you were, first of all, you were at HDB for how many years? 46 years. 46 years. Well, we, we started, I mean, we, we, so when I left university, 76, um, I started attending there, became yeah. part of the leadership team there from 76. Uh, was ordained in 86 and went back as the curate there. From, eight, from 86 to 2005, I, 19 years as assistant pastor, like yeah. curate to Sandy. And then from 2005 to 2022, 17 years. Nikki loves speaking. numbers. He'll give yes, you and <laughs> dates. <laughs> but you, you were able to, you know, pastor the church yes. and... and Huge More privilege. than that. Yeah. Huge privilege. And it was a huge privilege. And I you think globally, mm. but you act locally, which I love. I was at that meeting, Nikki, where John Wimber ministered. And, um, and I remember it very vividly. And when he spoke uh, about you being an evangelist, because I... I was an evangelist, my ears pricked, and who is that evangelist? And that was you. As you think about what happened, what is it that stands out for you about that encounter? I think uh, the, the Holy Spirit is key to mm. everything. And um, as you know, the work of the Spirit is that we should know that we're loved. Yes. And uh, Paul says the love of God is poured into our heart. God's love for us is poured yes. into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And everybody's looking for love. And supremely, we need to know that we are loved and we're loved by God. And the experience of the Holy Spirit is to know that you are loved by God. Through the cross, you know, the son, St. Paul wrote, the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. That's how we know that we're loved, through the, the fact that Jesus died for each one of us. But we experience that love through the Holy Spirit. The love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And it's that experience of knowing that you're loved that changes everything, I think, and is what people are searching for. Absolutely. Well, you've seen the work of the Holy Spirit um, over these last few decades, and you've had the privilege of pastoring a wonderful church, mm. and, and I feel privileged you asked me to come and, yes. and fellowship and minister with yes. you yes. many, many times. Time. Oh, many I, times. I tell you, it's all, always all, a high point. No, for us and Killy, it has always been just so lovely, whether it's been at HDB, whether it's been a, a smaller group of leaders, or whether it's been one of your focus conferences we've absolutely loved them um as you look back in hindsight are there things that you wish you did and are there things that you wish you hadn't done hmm. wow that's quite a question i think there is all there are always things you wish that you'd done you'd done more uh, but at the same time, you wish that you hadn't taken life so seriously and relaxed. So I think it, it's, it's both of those things. Um, what things? I think I wished I hadn't worried so much yes. about things. I think they're often spending far too much time worrying about things that haven't worked or relationships or all sorts of things that you worry about, but not trusting to the no. sovereignty of God. Of God. That is so right. So why do you think, Pippa, do, do we struggle, you know, do not be anxious? Mm -hmm. And yet... Oh, yeah, we, all the time, like, still. can't help it. Yes. So do, why, what is it that prevents us from believing in the providence of God? I know, because logically, I know God is good. I know he's heard my prayer. I know all those things. But it's the thoughts I, I imagine from the devil. Well, it's within oneself. It's the world, the devil. And tempting you as well with the things that are around you and life is difficult nobody says that life is going to be easy even becoming a christian doesn't make your life easy life as Kay warren says is much harder than you expect it to be yeah. it is there are challenges difficulties all around 
And yes, I believe, and I'm sure we all do believe, that God is good and ultimately all things will work it out. But it's that, that, that interim period where you're not sure that you're doing the right thing, that you, God's heard you, that all those things that I think we're prone to, to worry. And it is, it's time and time again trying to go back to offering it to God and letting it go. Absolutely. And I think so often we offer it to God, but then we just take it back again. <laughs> we do, do we? And worrying it, paper is exhausting. It is exhausting. It's draining, isn't it's it? Very, yes. And sometimes the things we've worried about are so ridiculous. Yes. But some are important. There are big things in life. People get sick. People no, have of hard times. And But it's still, it's holding that sovereignty of, of God the, that all will be well in the end. The yes. Lord will return. He will make all things new. He'll wipe away every tear from our eyes. It will all be all right in the end. Yes. And it's the trust. And of course, you feel so much better when you let go of it, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Even if it doesn't change, you feel so much better when you do let, let it go and put it all in Jesus' hands and trust that he will work it out. I know. And before lockdown, uh, Pippa, you, you were diagnosed yes, with, with a bit of lung cancer. A bit of lung cancer. Yes. And what, what was the story there? I mean, again, I think I was very blessed uh, because they caught it so early. Because it's one of those things it's very hard to detect. But I'd had pneumonia, I'd had a scan, someone had picked it up. I could see the hand of God in it. And um, they, they just found this little bit of, they weren't sure at first what it was and watched for a bit. And then it had changed and grown. And they said they ought to take it out. And I think you, know, you, you are in a shock those days. But I can also say the prayers of people carried me for, through. Yes. Definitely. Yes. The sense that, that I was not alone in it, that I could sense the loving hand of God, the kindness of God. Nikki became terribly domesticated over, <laughs> yes. all over the... Uh, suddenly you even learnt to sort of put on the washing machine and all yes. sorts of things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what was so lovely, you were in hospital, for, was it two weeks? You I was in the end, I came out but then I had to go I back in. had to go in, back, back in, in and, and dear Nicky stayed every night he sleeping did, on nights. a chair yes. Yes. and I gather one night you thought I'll go home and sleep at home but then decided I don't want to do that. I want. I'd I'm rather be sure. uncomfortable. What was it? Yeah, I'd rather be uncomfortable with her than comfortable without her. Yes. Yeah, you were. Ver you were very good. He was. Mm. He was very supportive, and the fr the prayers and the friends around praying, encouraging, is so amazing because you don't face those things of alone, course. do you? No. The Christian family is extraordinary. It is, and you do sense feel that sense of being carried by the prayers of yes, of and the you people. do, and and the Christian family almost. Um, comes alive when you have a need. Yes, that yes. You're not always aware yes, of if yes. you don't have a need. Now, but you've seen Pippa. You've seen God move. You've seen miracles. You've seen healings, and and we live in this world of miracle and mystery. Mm. Uh, and it's kind of like, well, you've seen miracles, and then oh, but you've got a bit of lung cancer. Yes. And it's like, yes. what's going on there? Yes. Yes. I don't know that there are any answers to that. It's it's that this is, we live in this wor world between the now and the second coming, and when when Jesus will put all things right, and we live in a world where it's fallen, where there is sickness and and death and 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 struggle, but at the same time God does intervene. It is a wonderful it thing. Is. Yes, we. Be, I mean, we've been praying for somebody who's been on the staff who's yes. really bad um, uh, brain tumor, and it wasn't looking good at all. And it's the last, the last feedback. It has shrunk so much that the the oncologist and everybody is absolutely amazed. And you sort of think, you know, no, God really does hear yeah, our prayers. It, does it really does prayers. work. It is worth praying and praying and interceding and keeping going. And that God does the miraculous. He when does. He really does. No, it certainly does. Uh, Nikki, as you look back, does anything come to mind that? But you know, it's the same as what Pip said. I don't know whether you've seen Richard Curtis made a film called About Time. Yes. You know that yes, film? Yes. And the men in the family have the ability <laughs> to go back in time and change yes. things if they think something's gone That's wrong. That's right. And at the end of, the, well, I don't want to ruin the, you know, the film. But the, the plot for everyone. The, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, spoilers. Switch off at this moment if you, don't, if you want to see the film or yeah. don't want to see it. But the, the men realise that actually they don't want to change anything. The only thing they would want to change is to go back and do the same things, but without worrying about them. Yeah. And I think it's the same, 
You know, yes, there have been some very tough things. There have been tragedies. Uh, but you know, out of those tragedies, amazing things have come. And, and I wouldn't want the, the things that have come out of those tragedies. The thought that, I, that, that might, you would lose that as well. Um, you don't want actually to change a thing, but you, what you do want, I, what I do wish is that I worried less. Yes, um, and interesting. And trusted more and just enjoyed every moment. Absolutely. Of, um, and lent in to even the hard times. Yes. Um, so, but uh, we've been very blessed. Yes. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, King David where it says, King David served God in his generation. Mm. Um, that there is still another generation. <laughs> I'm not implying. Oh, yeah. I'm you not implying you. you're finished. Is there a hole no, that's no, no, open no, up no. And no. We no but, disappears. <laughs> but you certainly have. You certainly have. And one of the things that I think stands out is that um, I, there's a famous quote: the evangelist D. L. Moody, who said, "I'd rather put ten men to work than do the work of ten men." Well, obviously, it's much better to put a hundred men and women to work than try and do the work of a hundred men and women. Yeah. And you really have raised up and, well, invested. You have, uh, Sandy has um, invested in a new generation of leaders. I mean, one of my former assistants you took under your wing, Rick Thorpe, and he's yes. now the Bishop yes. of Islington. Yes. in charge of church planting yes. to the whole of England. I yes. know. And, and that must bring you a mm. sense of joy that you're mm. seeing all these leaders that, have, that came through HDB and are now pastoring and leading churches. Yes. yes. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, isn't it? It is wonderful to have been a, even a, the tiniest part yes. of their lives. I, I feel very proud of them all. In, in, if you're allowed to be proud. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, sure. <laughs> and people who... You should might be. Have, might have had a really tough time or started not uh, not looking as though it was going to be good and yet now they're flourishing yes, leading churches that god has done extraordinary things in their lives absolutely. you absolutely can see that without christ i don't know what would have happened to a lot of them but with him they are totally transformed and being used by god in the most remarkable ways absolutely mm. well there is more there is more and we're coming back Nikki to talk about what the more is and Alpha and everything else. But um, Killy and I love you both, Nikki and Pippa. Oh, we, we love, love you guys. guys. Honestly, you're, we value our friendship with you and uh, thank you so much to both of you, Nikki, Pippa, for joining us on Facing the Camera. Thank you for thank having you us. For having I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope that's inspired you. Uh, always heartwarming when I'm with Nikki and Pippa. Thank you so much for joining us on Facing the Canon. Please join us again. <laughs>